Hello, my name is Lisa Shea, and today we're going to talk about the way analytics and traffic work. And as the example for today, I'm going to be looking at Worcester Mat Info, which is a page I run for Worcester, Massachusetts. I've run this page for many, many years, but I only set up a YouTube channel for it about two years ago. And even then, I just really didn't use it much at all. I put on two entries for a show that was at the Worcester City Hall in January 2019. And other than that, I really didn't use it much at all. And then I decided a couple months ago that I would start putting more content on it. So about three months ago, I started putting other things in. So it's only got about 30 videos right now. And this is a good example of how traffic builds and also how getting certain types of videos into your site can start drawing in eyeballs to then help all of the different videos in your site. So to quickly summarize, the site is about Worcester, Massachusetts. So it's about the different buildings in Worcester, the different artworks, the different parks, and so on. So it's about uh, pretty much anything that I feel like talking about about the city of Worcester in Massachusetts. So let's go take a look at the videos in the YouTube studio area. All right. So again, I have uh, 29 videos, so not a ton. And the first one, you know, it's been up there for, what I say, three years or whatever, and it's only got 61 views. So even though it's been up for a while, it hasn't gotten many views. The other one has only got 11 views and only seven views. So this was not a site that was getting much traffic at all because I barely promoted it. And then I decided I'd start doing some park walkarounds and those got you know, 100 at 8, 90, that sort of stuff. And then Black Panther 2 came to town and I said, oh, I should go film and show what kinds of things are going with Black Panther 2. And I put up a video and it instantly got 492 views. I mean, this was super fast. So clearly, <laughs> if I can have a video up for multiple years and only get seven views on it because people just aren't that interested in that topic, and then if I could pop up a short video and all I did was drive around the edge of the tunnel to show where they were doing the filming and this got lots of views, comments, likes, all that kind of stuff. It shows that part of a key in getting people to find your videos is posting things that people are already looking for. They were already out there looking for Black Panther 2 stuff and they'd never heard of me, but because I used the right hashtags and keywords and so on, I was found. And then I started getting a couple subscribers because of that. And it's not, um, it's not that I happen to be more popular as a site now, because then I posted some videos about some of the animals at the zoo in Worcester, and they got very little views, you know, five views, nine views, and so on. So it's not a timing thing. It is absolutely a keyword, phrases that you're using in your description, things that you're using in your title. So then I put some zoo videos up, those got low views, and then I put up another Black Panther view that instantly got 183 views. And again, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of views here, but this is a very specific topic. So I don't really expect for the city of Worcester to be getting the hundreds of thousands of views that one might get for celebrity videos or something like that. But in comparison with the normal traffic that I would get on the Worcester site, it is substantially higher to go from four views to 400 views at the exact same posting time in essence. And then we'll go up here, got some smaller views for some of these other things I did. And then I posted about uh, the scene from The Honest Thief with Liam Neeson and that got 31 views. And again, it's not a huge number, but compared to like four views, it, it's still pretty impressive for a single day. And I'll talk briefly about this whole copyright claim. Let me go into this video so we can take a look at it. So this video involves me driving around the Johnson Tunnel and then a little snippet of the movie Honest Thief without any audio. I talk over it to say, you know, this is where, let's see if we go in here. No, this is the section all right, it's not going to show you. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through and I'll talk about this is the section where he's driving in this section and this is where he's driving the other section. So I'm, I'm using the movie video as a way to illustrate where the scenes are happening in this tunnel. And I got a partial copyright block because I'm using bits of the movie scene, but it's not a, we'll call it a dangerous block. There's different levels of blocking in YouTube. So the partial copyright block means I can't monetize it, which is you know fine with me because I'm, 
uh, not doing this stuff in this section to be monetizing it. It so they get monetizing um, money from it if this ever does get monetized, but. I still get all the credit for the traffic and its existence then brings in people to my site. So it's worth it to put up a couple of videos that maybe have copyright claims on them, knowing that you won't get the monetization benefits, but that you will get all the traffic and viewer and subscriber and other kinds of benefits. So let's go back out and take a look in general. All right, so, so the basics of this site is that it's a lot of me walking around parks, I'm reading Civil War era letters, I'm doing uh, views of local art shows and that sort of stuff. And if a movie happens to be filmed somewhere, I show the scenes where the movie was filmed and explain what the history of those locations are. And those movie videos bring in far more traffic than my other stuff and that helps people realize I'm here, which then hopefully will start to bring me in more subscribers. But again, I've only just started to do this in the past week or two. So I haven't yet seen a full benefit from it. I do see that I'm getting far more traffic and far more subscribers. So let's take a look at analytics. Well, so here <laughs> we can see that traffic was fairly low. And then all of a sudden I posted the Black Panther things and Black Panther things are causing these spikes. And then the uh, American Hustle and the Honest Thief kinds of things. And if we look at things by views, we've got the Black Panther 2, Black Panther 2, and then some of the parks in there and the other ones that I just loaded and haven't started coming up high yet in this uh, listing. Uh, let's do the whole lifetime. It shouldn't matter that much. But here you can see <laughs> traffic was very, very low. Started getting a little when I decided, oh, maybe I should start actually posting in here and putting in my park videos. And then it really spiked when I started putting in the movie related things. Black Panther, Black Panther. And then for some reason, it's not showing the other ones. Maybe they're too recent and they haven't started showing in here. All right, so let's take a look at the better details. Black Panther. So this is the overall traffic. For some reason, <laughs> I swear. Uh, let's just go back and do it the other way. All right. All right, so we have a little bit of a cliff at the beginning. There's always going to be a cliff of people dropping off when they start watching it because they decide it's not quite for them or that they're interested in something else. But once people get realize what I'm showing them, then they stay pretty steady. And there's always going to be some sort of a drop off because devices fail and people get distracted and so on. But that's still a fairly solid watch through rate that we've still got, you know, around 40% of them or so by the end of it before it goes into, you know, the little ending part where they're just not that interested in the, seeing the final detail. And part of what helps that is that this is short. It's under two minutes long. So if you make a nice short um, specific video, then you'll tend to get people watch it all the way through. If you have a longer video, then it's less likely that they'll watch it all the way through because they, you know, they get busy and something else goes on. Let's look at this Green Hill Park Zoo video. All right, so again, we've got a fairly steep drop off as people say, you know, oh, well, I thought I was going to see lions and tigers and all I'm seeing is uh, donkeys and horses. So, you know, there's a drop off and that's OK. And then you've got the people who do end up watching it through. But again, with this being a 10 minute long video, there's people who get part way through and say, OK, you know, I've seen enough animals for today. Maybe I'll come back some other time and see the rest of them. And that is quite fine. So this is a fairly normal uh, progression for a long video, which is a walking around kind of video. I have uh, videos in some of my other sites that I've uh, done these kinds of explorations of before where it's an author interview. And with the author interviews, you'll have a drop at the front where people decide they want to hear about this author or they don't. And then it will be pretty straight line through the rest of the hour because once someone settles in and says, okay, I want to hear what this author has to say, then they'll grab a mug of coffee or a mug of tea or something and they'll uh, sit back and enjoy the process. It's a little different when it's a walking around the zoo kind of thing because people have less investment in getting to the end of the process. It's not a conversation that they're participating in. So it's just important to note that 
different kinds of videos will have different kinds of curves, and then that is okay. All right, my tunnel one doesn't have enough people yet to generate the information. But here, I think the powwow one, or does this not have enough yet? Yeah, so the powwow one is a pretty straight line because it's only a minute and a half. It's a series of videos about the different murals that are in Worcester. And there's very little drop off because someone who gets into this says, oh, I, I'm interested in the murals. I like the murals. I want to see what they are. It's only two minutes or a minute and a half. So they're likely to sit there and watch them all and say, oh, that one's nice. Oh, that one's nice. So it depends on what you are showing, how long or short it is, and what kind of experience it is. If someone is invested in seeing the entire thing through or if they just want to get a taste of what this is about. This is a walk through the uh, Quinsigamon State Park, and there's very little cliff here. People who start this say, oh, I, I know the park, or I'm interested in the park, I want to see what it's like, so they don't tend to just all abandon it at the beginning. And then again, there's a drop off because there's a point where people say, oh, all right, I can see what the park's about, I think I'll go out there for the day. And then there's other people who will hang in there and say, oh, I want to see all the different parts of it and see the lake and beach. And I'm just walking around the park, so Someone who's this, oh, it's nice to watch her walk around the park. They're just going to hang in there and watch me walk around it. And again, it's only two minutes, so it's a short period. And different people have different things they want to get out of the video. So here's an interesting one. Oh, that's the one we just saw already. Where's the other one? Here we go. So this is the other one filming uh, Black Panther 2. So I went walking around the filming site and showed the stunt drivers practicing and all that other kind of stuff. So there was a little bit of cliff at the beginning, and then this is me walking around Worcester and talking about where they're going to be filming it. About here, we are now getting towards where they are actually filming. So all the people who said, eh, I don't really want to watch her walk around Worcester, once they get her, they say, oh wait, look, we're watching actual things happening on the Black Panther uh, set and they follow through. And then here, there's a little rise. This is where the stunt motorcycle rider is practicing his motorcycle stunts. So there's a rise here because people are watching this a couple times to really see what he's up to and are interested in this particular piece of it. So if I had made a super short little video of just this piece, I might get lots and lots of views on it. Instead, I made a longer video, which has me walking through Worcester and showing the different angles on the scene and so on. So this is, a, again, a pretty normal type of slope, and it shows some of the different kinds of behavior that you get. And you can't think to yourself, oh, I want people not to drop off here. Dr people dropping off is just a normal part of the video process. People try out different videos and say, oh, am I interested in this one? Am I interested in that one? There's always going to be a portion of people who drop off. And then the people who want to watch just a portion of it, that's just the way some people are. You can't force them to stay. The only thing that you could do if you really wanted to is make like an eight second long video that is like just the motorcycle jump. So people get into the video, they see something starting to happen, they watch it for eight seconds and then they stop. And they're in that case are likely to watch it for all eight seconds, which I showed in one of my other uh, video channels where I had an eight second video. But for most of us, we want to put up a bit longer videos that have a bit more of a story to them or a scene to them or whatever. So you can make a mix. You can make some short videos, some long videos, and have them serve different purposes for your channel. All right, so we looked at the zoo. We looked at Lake Park. Broadmeadow, it's another one of the parks around here. So again, this is me walking around a park. There's some portion of people who said, oh, I'm not interested in this park. There's some other portion of people who got this far and say, okay, I've seen enough of the park to know that it's interesting to me or not interesting to me, so I'm going to get in my car and go drive over there. And then there's a portion of people who say, I'm enjoying this little virtual tour. I get to sit in my house. It's rainy out, but I get to enjoy this walking around the park. And, you know, a third of the people sat there and enjoyed the rest of it for the eight and a half minutes that it was. So there's always going to be a drop off. They got what they were interested in out of this session, or maybe they were interested in seeing something else. Maybe they wanted to see the butterflies and I wasn't showing butterflies. So they went to look for a different video. Um, it's, it's hard to know what particular reason that they decided to go at that point. And then you'll settle in with the people who are interested in the full experience that you give them. So the only reason I would really look at uh, completely changing your video style is if you had a giant cliff here which went down to zero and no one <laughs> watched it, then clearly what you're providing is not something that people are interested in. But as long as you have a group of people who are interested in what you're doing, 
um, the way to reduce some of this drop off is to clearly say what this is about so they know this is about the broad meadow brook you can say in your description this is me walking around for eight and a half minutes showing the different sections so people know what they're going to be getting but you know a lot of people don't read those descriptions at all they're scrolling through YouTube, they see the title in the image. That's all they see before they decide to click or not click. So you need to make that title and image as uh, meaningful and, and informative as possible so that people who click on it are people who are going to want to see it. So I think those are all the kinds of videos we've got in here. We got the Civil War stuff, but as you can see, there's very few views. I was a bit surprised. I thought far more people would be interested in hearing authentic Civil War letters. And these were unpublished, so these are brand new for the Civil War audience, but apparently either the keywords I'm using or the number of other options they have out there, just not that many people are finding them and reading them. The different parks that are out here, we talked about Green Hill Park. And my very first one, which is a African instrument. You know, people in general who are watching me play this. I'm sitting there, it's uh, sort of like a um, xylophone, and I'm sitting there playing it, and people sit there and listen to it, and you can see the rise. So they go back and replay the section to hear what the notes sound like. And it could be when I posted this that there are very few uh, videos out there that show how this instrument sounds. So maybe that was part of how people found me and were interested in it. You know, I think if I just said, um, if, if, this, if this wasn't of the instrument and was instead of just a piece of artwork hanging in the wall, I don't think I would have gotten that kind of traffic on this particular video. So it got traffic not because it was in Worcester, not because it was a work of art, but because it was a specific instrument that I was making noises with and someone wanted to hear what that instrument sounded like. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about how the traffic is working on this site. Again, this is a small site. You can see the numbers, it's got very small numbers. And some topics that I thought would be really popular, like about the Civil War, are getting pretty much no views. And then other topics that I just did on a lark, like the Black Panther 2 stuff, <laughs> then end up getting a lot more views and bringing in eyeballs. So I am now in the process of making more videos about locations from movies. And that seems to be bringing in traffic, but that's not the reason this channel exists. This channel exists to help local Worcester people find things to do around Worcester. So my aim with the movie stuff is to then bring in more eyeballs so that people can learn about Elm Park and Green Hill Park and Institute Park and get out and be more healthy and connect with nature more. So uh, it's good to know for your topic area what draws in eyeballs and then what you're interested in using your site to do as a human being and hopefully you can find a combination of those two things which make you happy. So let me know if you have any questions at all about how the traffic is working on the site, how the copyright claims work. If you have questions about that, I'm happy to make a video. And about the concept of balancing topics which bring in eyeballs with topics which you want to be getting out to more viewers for your own reasons. So great, have a wonderful afternoon.